Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Bundles and today's video is going to go over the first chapter of my dropshipping book, which is Dropshipping Now, Wholesale Later. Um, the first chapter really starts to um, dive into how to get started with your hair business when you are considering dropshipping and then transitioning later on to wholesale. So I'm going to be going over the first chapter, but it's also going to be answering questions that I get very frequently, which are, um, how do I start a hair business? Where should I start? Um, what things should I do after I've decided that I want to start a hair business? What should be my first step and things like that? So hopefully this video answers all of those questions for you. I do have tons of videos in my hair business play playlist right here on YouTube. So be sure to check that out after this video. Also be sure to give the video a big thumbs up. Please make sure that you are subscribed and let's get right into the video. So um, again, my book, Dropshipping Now, Wholesale Later, it outlines the, this process, how to get started with dropshipping, how to grow your business, how to maintain your business, how to transition your business to wholesale. It goes over all of that. So the first thing that I want to go over is deciding which plan. So if you decide to dropship with me, my company is badchickhair.com. The links are down below. And let me back up a little bit. For those of you that may want be wondering, what is dropshipping, okay? Dropshipping is the option to have a external inventory source, meaning that you sell your products, you have your own business, you create your own policies, you um, keep your own profits, um, you package your own bundles if you want to, you, you can brand your own hair, but you have inventory on the back end, meaning that you don't have inventory sitting at your house or your studio or your warehouse. Um, the inventory is being shipped to you or shipped to your clients on a per order basis. So it's very similar to the pre-order method. If you all are familiar with that, with the pre-order method, you go ahead and you purchase bundles from your vendor when you get an order. Very simple, very similar to that. The only difference that I would really emphasize with that method is that when you're drop shipping, it's a guaranteed like um, it's a it's a agreement that you and that company both have. You know, versus if you're doing the pre-order method, there are some companies that will go into agreement and say, hey, this is what we're doing. Essentially, that's like drop shipping. And there are some companies that say that they don't know what you're talking about or won't offer it, depending on what company you go with. I've had screenshots from different people that send things to me based on the companies that they work with. Some of the screenshots you'll be shocked with. <clears throat> but with drop shipping, it gives you that. For me, peace of mind is like almost, <laughs> it's priceless, you know? to be able to just have peace of mind and know that I'm working with a company that knows what I'm doing. Um, I can pretty much bet that this company is going to be around a few months down the line because one thing that I've noticed, and I'm sure a lot of you can attest to if you've been in the hair industry, is that one company may be here today and gone tomorrow. There may be a vendor that's been working for six months and then all of a sudden you go back and you try to find that vendor. That vendor has changed their name. Their products aren't the same. Or you go back and try to find that vendor. That vendor is no longer available. So it's a tricky game out here. I believe in any industry, but because I've been in the hair industry for so long, I can attest to it being kind of finicky at times. So you want to decide which plan that brings you back to number one, you're going into when you are looking at drop shipping. Typically drop shipping companies have different options for you to choose from. Some of their plans may come with um, like a white label package where you, they, the company designs the logo um, or recreates your logo that they put on the products and send out for you. I was doing that for a little bit. And then um, some companies offer an option for you to send in your branding materials and then for them to ship out the packages or the bundles in this case, um, closures or, or frontals with your branded items that you sent in. I do offer that option. So you, do, you just want to choose like what plan works best for you. Um, you can always change the plan that you're on with me, um, but you just kind of have to fill around for the different drop shipping companies out there and decide on which company you want to go with and which plan you're going to go into. Like I said, a lot of times they offer different plans and you want to see what plan aligns with your vision for your business. Uh, once you decide what plan you're going to get on, um, you then want to decide how you're going to sell your product. So knowing that you don't have a whole in-house inventory, you're going to need to be creative on how you sell. Even if you have in-house inventory, you're still going to have to be creative on how you sell. So it's time to start thinking about what platforms you're going to use. If you're going to sell via website, are you going to sell on Amazon, for example? Are you going to sell um, 
strictly on social media without any website or doing all of the above? Like, how are you going to sell your extensions? And also with how are you going to sell, you also want to be thinking about how you're going to market. A lot of people don't start off when I'm doing consultations, doing different mentoring, and also answering questions in regards to starting a hair business. Um, a lot of people don't start off with heavy, heavy, heavy uh, advertising through like Google ads or Facebook ads. Some do, um, but some people don't. A lot of people that I work with don't. Um, and then towards like the middle of their hair business journey, some get discouraged, some don't. But when that discouragement comes, a lot of times it kind of like blocks our judgment because we're not operating in our best mindset. We're not being our best selves when we're feeling discouraged or anxious or, um, you know, we're just not feeling as positive as we can be. You know, a lot of times we don't think on the highest level that we can. And so sometimes people have, um, even me, I, I've started paying for a lot of paid ads and it wasn't really geared toward my target audience. And so that's why I created a lot of videos on this channel too, on how to target your target audience, because you can have a hundred website visitors and get no sales that day. And you can have 10 website visitors and get multiple sales. So it kind of just depends. It's not really the quantity, but it's the quality. And um, what I mean by that is you can have a lot of traffic, but that doesn't constitute your sales or your success, right? I constantly talk about the fact that I'm not just a strictly, like I'm, I'm not just a numbers person only, you know what I mean? Like I'm not the kind of person that's going to say, do this, do that, do that. And you're going to get this much money today because I think that's really unrealistic in most circumstances. You can do the right action steps and that doesn't guarantee that you're going to make a sale today, but it does set you up for the right foundation so that you can start to receive sales and not just sales. And you know, that's it. Of course, you may have some one-off sales. But the goal is to be able to have repeat business. And I talk about that a lot too on this channel. I just made a video um, a few days, what's it, a few days? Maybe a few days or last week where I talked about um, how to keep your customers warm. And in that video, I talked about the importance of repeat business. So you want to kind of think about that. How will you sell your hair extensions? How are you going to market? Because remember with dropshipping, dropshipping doesn't take the place of you doing the footwork. Dropshipping doesn't take the place of you being your own business owner, your own boss, so to speak. Dropshipping only provides that inventory or any other plan, any other additions or add-ons that you added to the plan. Like for example, I gave you the white label packaging. I do offer stock photos as well. Um, there's just, you know, I offer a, sam a sample kit that comes with some one of the packages. So there's just different options if you're looking at my business. And the options, again, are all outlined down below this video. Just click drop shipping and you'll be able to see everything that I'll offer. Um, but, you know, having an inventory source doesn't take the place of you doing the work. So you're still going to need to have these ideas mapped out. You're still going to need to have a direct action plan on how you're going to market your hair extensions um, and, and stick to that. Another way that I... Um, go oh, Another thing that I go over, another part aspect that I go over in my book is wearing your hair extensions. Now, I recently talked about how I am transitioning to wearing my natural hair a lot more often, and I'm actually thinking about getting locks. And so I was kind of torn with that decision because for the longest, I have been a firm believer and advocate of wearing your extensions because it's promotion, it's advertisement. I've gotten a, I've gotten a lot of sales from wearing my hair extensions and people asking, hey, where did you get those bundles? Hey, where did you buy your hair? And I was able to refer them to my website and then get sales. And then they were able to tell their friends and family and it you know, caused uh, word of mouth. And then they repeated purchases. And you know, so my business grew. I started my business in 2013 and I feel like I'm at a point now where I'm not done growing, but I have consistent clients that know the quality of my hair extensions that have worked with me for a while. And so I'm, I'm wanting to try something different with my hair. Um, I'm not saying I'm getting away from wearing extensions because I think extensions are beautiful, but I also think that my natural hair is beautiful too. And I just, I want to wear my hair more. So I'm going to do that. Um, but I also talk about how wearing the extensions can definitely help um, promote your business and the perks with that too. So again, all this information, I go into further detail in my book, Drop Shipping Now, Wholesale Later. Okay, so the next part that you want to consider is which payment method you're going to use. Um, for the longest, I was using um, Sezzle, I was using PayPal. Um, what else? I really don't use any credit card um, companies, like direct credit card companies. Uh, and I haven't for a really long time, ever since... Um, my company was scammed and I talk about how that happened in another video in my hair business playlist. So you want to be very 
cautious on which payment method you use. Just because it's trending is not a reason for me to change my payment method. However, being that now, like when I started using Sezzle, Sezzle is a buy now, pay later option. When I started using that, that was very heavily used and, and promoted amongst different companies. And then companies like Afterpay and Klarna started to get a lot more popular. And so cu customers would come and they would ask, you know, hey, do you accept Klarna? Do you accept Afterpay? And so I was like, hmm, do I want to continue using Sezzle, which I did for the longest but I recently recently decided that it was more beneficial to my business and my customers for me to switch over to Klarna because the majority of my customers are using Klarna, um, not Sezzle anymore. So you just have to kind of find out what works best for you. But then I have some of my customers that I do consultations with, mentoring with, with and they still use Sezzle. And then I have some companies that don't use PayPal. I have some that use Cash App. So it just depends on what works best for you. For me, PayPal has been like my number one trustworthy <laughs> payment source, payment merchant. Like I have just loved using PayPal. Some people don't. Um, some people have enjoyed using Klarna. Some people have enjoyed using Sezzle. Some people have enjoyed using Afterpay. Some people just use Cash App, like I mentioned. Some use Stripe. It just depends on you know what you want to use. So I would do some research too. I would literally set aside a day or a good evening to read through like the fine print and to also go through like how the fraud process works with these payment merchants because trust me in the hair industry that's something you want i mean in any industry you, you want to know how that goes because if you get a charge back if someone purchases from you and then let's say they receive the hair and then you automatically get like a charge back a couple days later and let's say you know that they received the hair because you can check on on the website and see the tracking number and it shows delivered or let's say that you're following them on social media and you can see that they're actually wearing um, the hair extensions. You want to be able to know, like, is this merchant going to fight on your behalf? Because the last thing you want to do is end up in court. I watch um, Judge Judy or Ju Judy Justice now very, very frequently. I've always, I've, I've really loved Judge Judy, kind of off topic. But the reason I brought her up is because there's been like a lot of different cases on Judge Judy or Judy Justice, excuse me, about hair companies and like fraud and people doing just that. And I'm like, wow, like people are still doing this. Um, and something very similar, pretty much like the same exact storyline happened to me years and years ago. And I shared that on uh, that video that I'm referring to in my hair business playlist. I think the title of the video is something along the lines of hair businesses take losses too. So check that out in your spare time. But you want to make sure that you're really doing your due diligence when you choose which payment methods you're going to use. Don't get a website, please, and just enable all payment methods because it just, you, you think you're going to get more orders that way, you know, because a lot of times our mindset will be, hey, I just got a, you know, got this website. I can get money this way. I can get money this way, this way, this way. But just because you can get money that those ways, um, if you think about it and then the payment policies and the fraud policies don't align, you can also lose money those ways too. So just be very cautious with that. Um, also, selecting a domain name, that's the next point. That's the number four that I want to go over. It also discusses this in chapter one of my ebook, Drop Shipping Now, Wholesale Later. Select a domain name. So what do you want your URL, or URL to be? What do you want people to be able to type in to pull up your name? I really believe that your URL, um, I, I'm all for having something kind of concise and not too difficult for anyone to grasp on or to understand if you're saying it. Um, However, I also believe that you make your domain name. There are some domain names that if you think about them, like take the hype behind the business out of it and just think about the name. You may be like, I would have never thought about this um, this name at all. Like I would have never thought about, I just think, I'm not going to say any names, but just think about like five of your favorite stores and think about their, their URLs without any association to their popularity. You know, and it may kind of be like, what? So that just shows you that you can build a URL to what you want it to be. Um, and that's why I'm saying like, when you pick your name, yes, put some thought into it. Yes, I would try to make it as memorable and catchy as possible. I would try to make it align with what you're doing. Um, but at the end of the day, you can have the best domain name. If you don't do anything with it, if you don't build that brand behind it, then it's just a, a domain name. You know what I mean? So you want to make sure that this is something that can brand your business, something that you actually feel comfortable with. You have to feel comfortable with it because it's going to be stuck with you. You want to be able to feel confident when you give it out. You want to be able to feel confident when you have it on your business card. You want to feel that. And a lot of times it's the confidence that helps sell any product that you stand behind. The last thing that I want to go over is advertising. So 
I mentioned that before, how are you going to market, how are you going to advertise, but you also want to consider like, how are you going to advertise for your website setup if you decide to sell on your website? Do you want to use stock photos, which stock photos aren't bad if you're starting out with stock photos, but this book is all about transitioning and scaling, upscaling your business. So you can start off with stock photos, but then you want to eventually have customer photos. Do you want to eventually have um, photos where, you know, you're actually showing a picture of the extensions that you're selling um, that you took a picture of that's in your um, logos or in your branding? Possibly. So um, consider, you know, photo shoots. I did go over some videos um, or create some videos on this channel where I talked about how you can have a professional photo shoot at home and some of the apps that I recommend using. If you're interested in me going over those tips again, be sure to leave them down below. Leave a comment down below and I'll um, try to make a video on that too or find the video where I was talking about that specific topic and link it down below. Um, but start considering how you want to have your website laid out. Um, are you going to create your website yourself? Someone else going to do it? What e-commerce platform are you going to use? If you're asking me for my recommendation, if you are an e-commerce business, I'm always going to number one, recommend Shopify. Um, well, I'm not going to say always, but for now, I'm recommending Shopify. Shopify is what I've been using for the longest. Shopify is what I recommend to my clients. Um, Shopify is just an amazing e-commerce platform. It continuously evolves and I enjoy using it. The analytics are out of this world. The apps are really cool. I mean, all the um, details that the, the, at the platform provides are just amazing. So um, I would recommend looking into Shopify. However, that's just my recommendation. Shopify is not the only e-commerce platform out there. Do what works best for you. Do your research, figure out um, your budget as well, because even after your website is designed, whether you do it or someone else does it, typically there is a monthly fee. So ask yourself, is this something I'm committed to paying? even if you don't get orders the first month, because sometimes it takes time to actually build your clientele, it takes time to build website traffic, it takes time to get the name out of your business. And then it also takes time to build that trust um, within your business for people to actually feel comfortable purchasing online. There are a lot of companies online that don't mean well, that aren't legitimate. So for people to trust you to go to your website and to purchase, that's huge. And that's why I think every order should be celebrated because it's an order that could have potentially went someplace else, but they decided to, to purchase through you. So if you are interested in creating your website through Shopify, there is a link for that down below as well. Be sure to click on the link. There may be a free trial, but you have to click on the Shopify link to see. Um, so that's what I pretty much go over in the first chapter of my ebook in greater detail. Again, the ebook is drop shipping now, wholesale later. It is linked down below if you are interested in purchasing. Um, I'll probably go ahead and do some more videos on some other chapters in the book. And I'll probably, um, you know, make some other videos in regards to some other tips that will help starting um, out your hair business or growing your hair business. So if you have any additional questions, again, leave them down below. I do want to thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.